Hello there. Welcome back. Today, we're going to be making some Parmesan crusted, bacon baked Brussels sprouts. And I'm going to show you how to do it. And for your convenience, here's the ingredients. Brussels sprouts are one of those things you either love or you hate, it seems like. I know Gordon Ramsay absolutely hates them, and I think he's wrong. If you do them right, they make a great side dish for a lot of main courses. They'll take on the flavor of pretty much anything you put on them, which makes them a super versatile side. No matter what you're cooking, you can always find some way to season your Brussels sprouts to match that dish. You just have to put on your thinking cap and get real creative. But enough with the stalling, let's get to the prep. It wouldn't be bacon Brussels sprouts without some bacon. I've got this left over from a breakfast I had the other morning, so I'm going to use the remainder of the bacon to cook these Brussels. We're going to need to par cook the bacon for about four or five minutes to let some of the moisture in the bacon out of it. That way it has the opportunity to get crispy on top of the Brussels. I'm just going to pop that in the oven at 350 for about four or five minutes or until you get some moisture on the bottom of your pan and then take them out and let them cool down. And while we're waiting on our bacon to cook, it's a perfect time to cut up our Brussels sprouts and pop them in a bowl. I'm just going to go ahead and cut this little end piece off, and you're good to go. My Brussels are pre-washed. If you don't know if yours are pre-washed, they're probably not, and you should go ahead and wash them. It doesn't really matter what size Brussels sprouts you get. This one might be a little big, though. If you have little leaves that fall off, add them to it. Those are going to crisp up and be probably the best part of the entire thing, if I'm being honest. Just be careful of your fingers. Dinner can get real expensive if you have to go to the hospital. I don't ever really know what to do with these little end bits here. If you have any suggestions, let me know. I don't know that there's anything I can use them to cook with, but I know they'd probably be pretty good to compost with. I guess if you had a compost heap. Let me know if you have any ideas, because I can't think of any. Anyway, I'm going to be hitting these Brussels with quite a bit of salt. I'm sure on the camera it's going to look like an insane person's amount of salt, but trust me, Brussels sprouts love salt. I don't know what it is, but I always feel like I can never add enough salt to them. I couldn't tell you exactly how much salt I'm adding. It's just kind of by eye. If you really want a better estimate, I guess you could eat one of these little leafy things. Even more salt. If you're uncomfortable adding that much salt, just add whatever you're comfortable with. And then if you need to add some at the end, that's fine. Add some at the end. Now for some black pepper. And I'll give that a little mix. And just a little bit more black pepper. Again, this is all by eye. Do whatever you're comfortable with. You don't have to add more than you're comfortable with. It's your dinner. Make it however you want to make it. I'm just here to give you some suggestions. Now I'm going to go ahead and add some olive oil to it. I don't know exactly how much olive oil either. I figure it's maybe two or three tablespoons. But it depends on how many Brussels sprouts you're making and how oily you want them. And the reason I seasoned the Brussels sprouts first instead of the olive oil is so that the salt and pepper is all over the Brussels sprouts. If you put oil on them first and then add your salt and pepper, you're just going to be seasoning the olive oil and not necessarily the Brussels sprouts themselves. I don't know the exact food science behind it, but I know they always come out better anytime I hit them with salt and pepper before the olive oil. All right, they've got a nice sheen to them. I think they're about ready. I'm just going to set them aside for now. And now it's time for our friends garlic and shallot. They're like best buds for stuff like this. I've got a couple big garlic cloves that I'm just going to cut the ends off of. Give, Give them a, a quick, quick smash. smash. And I'm going to give those a nice little mince. Again, be careful with stuff like that if you're not super experienced with a knife. Not to say I'm perfect with a knife, but I am comfortable with it. Go ahead and pop that in with my Brussels. I'm not going to need this whole shallot, just this bigger chunk. Pop the top off that. Do a little slice down this side. Get in there to that tasty core. And then I'm just going to make some little cuts into the shallot like I would an onion. Again, being as careful as I can be. One of these days I'm going to cut myself in a video. I just know it. Just give that a little dice. That was definitely not my finest work, but it'll work for what we're doing. Get 
that a quick once over. Pop that into my bowl. And give that a little mix. My bacon's out of the oven, it's cooled down, it's ready. I dumped as much liquid out of the pan as I could so that I could reuse the pan. Now I'm just gonna stack my bacon up and go ahead and cut it into little pieces. And all I'm looking for here is like half inch, kind of little pieces, quarter inch, whatever. As long as they're in little rectangles, you'll be fine. Go ahead and take your Brussels sprouts, put them over your tray. Make sure to get all that goodness out of the bowl. And then I'm gonna spread those around so they're fairly even on the tray. And disperse my bacon as evenly as I can. What's gonna happen here is as the bacon is cooking and the fat starts to render in it, the fat's gonna drip all over the Brussels sprouts and help them get a bunch of that bacon flavor in there. We're gonna go ahead and pop these in the oven at 375. They're gonna take anywhere from 20 to 22 minutes, somewhere in there to cook. But about five minutes before they're done, we're gonna pull them out and cover them in Parmesan so that that has time to melt and hopefully get a little crispy over the top in that last little bit. If you put the Parmesan on now and just sprinkle it over the top, it's gonna be burnt by the time they're done. I can promise you that. So let's go ahead and put those in and then I'll meet back up with you for the sprinkle. So they've been in there about 15 minutes. I'm just gonna give them a light dusting of Parmesan and then pop them back in for another five to seven minutes, give or take. It really just depends on when the cheese is melted and when the bacon's crispy. Just use your best judgment for it, really. We also don't wanna completely cover the bacon or it's gonna hinder the cooking process. So just a little bit of cheese goes a long way, really. And back in the oven it goes. Parmesan cheese has a really low moisture point so it takes a little while to melt, but as soon as it melts, it gets really crispy really fast. So you have to be careful when using it. That's why we added it later on in the cook. And wham bam, you're done. You made it. It's literally that easy. It doesn't take a ton of effort to make these, and they're absolutely delicious. So I, I would urge you to try them. And as I like to say, if it's bad for the heart, it's good for the soul. I'll see you all in the next one. And just as a little aside, if you've made it this far into the video, thank you. I'm sorry for the late upload. Life can get hard sometimes, but we do our best with what we have. I really appreciate everybody who's been watching and all the new subscribers. Welcome to the channel. I thought I'd just take a quick second to say thank you to all of you, and I really appreciate it.